Most people think drawing is magic and I'm here today to show you that it actually is a series of decisions that you can make so that you can draw as well as you hope to. Uh, my name is Jennifer Rouse Barbeau. I am an artist and an illustrator and a professor of advertising at Canada College in North Bay. Today we have uh, Ann Simser with us modeling so that I can show you the secrets of creating a good drawing, a portrait of a person, which most people consider to be the hardest thing to draw. Now the big thing about drawing is you can't get skimpy with the paper. You are drawing a, um, a face, usually larger than that face would appear in real life. Part of that is because the series of decisions that you need to make require that you observe the model and then make all the small decisions and complex interpretations of taking what you see and turning it into line on paper. If you work too small, what you do is you actually limit your ability to use your body to help you put this information down on paper. Drawing is a global skill, much like um, swinging a golf club or driving or learning to walk. And so you need to recognize that your body has to be involved. There's wisdom in your body as much as there is in your hands and you need to free up your arm so that you're not doing small little scratches on a piece of paper but instead are working large enough to see proportions well. Now the average person is built more or less the same, right, as everyone else. We've got eyes and a nose and um, uh, you know, a head with ears and so on. There are a couple of basic proportions that you can trust to be true. The biggest being that the eyes are essentially in the middle of a head. If you use your pencil as a measuring tool, you can quickly see that the eyes to the chin, the distance of the eyes to the chin is nearly identical to the distance of the eyes to the top of the head. So in my drawing, I can actually take that distance and use it to make sure that I am not foreshortening the head and actually cropping off the skull, which is the most common error that people make when they, when they draw, particularly when they draw for the first time. Beyond that, all of the other distinctions of a person's features are actually really unique to that person. So you need to learn to observe the details of someone's features and try to record those as accurately as possible. Now, Anne here is a very pretty girl. There's a tendency to assume in pretty girls that there aren't any sort of anomalies in their features that, uh, that many people would consider less than pretty. So a crooked nose or a bump somewhere. And if as an artist you decide to omit those, you actually also omit some of that person's beauty. The beauty is actually in the combination of features and the things that we sometimes consider the ugly bits add as much to beauty as the things we consider, you know, well balanced and, uh, and perfectly proportioned. So when you're drawing, resist the urge to correct what you see. It's important that you trust that nature knows how to put a person together and your job as you draw is simply to record what you see. All of the answers in this case are right in our model's face. I don't have to improve on anything. My job is simply to relax and to record what I see and trust that Anne's beauty is going to come out without my having to work at it. Now, once you get the basics down, the basic facial structure, you can start working in some detail. You might notice that I'm holding my pencil in a way that isn't typical. Most people will write like this, but when you draw, you actually want your hand to act as kind of a, a ballast 
or a, uh, a guide so that it can run freely against the paper. I'm going to move in and do what is probably the most interesting thing on the average human face and that is eyes. Now the detail of eyes is fairly important because when you draw you want to put detail where you want your audience to look. And as I said in most cases it's the human eye that attracts the most attention. And so it's worth taking the time to put some detail into that area. Some of the things that most people don't think about because they don't bother checking is um, that eyes have shadows just like any other three-dimensional object. So you need to pay attention to the various lighting and shadows that are caused by eyelids and so on because they are what will reveal the detail of that person. So this is just a beginning but you can clearly see that it's actually fairly simple in a short period of time to capture the general essence of a person on paper. Thanks very much. <laughs>